How long would it take to die on our solar system planets? Our oxygen-rich planet is the only place in our solar system that has the right conditions to support us. However, the remaining planetary systems just seem almost beautiful and intriguing to resist. What would happen if humans went to the other planets in our solar system? And more importantly, how long would we survive in them? I'm sure you're not one to back away from a challenge. Join us as we embark on the most intriguing and dangerous journey of your life as we explore just how long our solar system planets will support human life. Strap on your seatbelts and let's go. The first planet we'll be dropping by is Mercury, which is the smallest and closest planet to the sun. But if you thought this translates to the hottest planet in our solar system, you couldn't be more wrong because Venus comfortably holds this spot. Venus will have to wait its turn because we're yet to even land on Mercury. The time span you would survive on Mercury pretty much depends on where you land. If you land on the hot surface where temperatures go as high as 430 degrees Celsius or 800 degrees Fahrenheit, you'd pretty much be cooked porridge before making a successful landing. Your chances of survival aren't that much better if you land on the dark side, with temperatures dropping as low as negative 180 degrees Celsius or negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. However, if you are lucky enough to land in between both temperatures and find a surface area that's kind of in between, you pretty much have a greater chance of survival, which is just as long as you can hold your breath, unfortunately. Good luck trying to breathe in oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium. Still alive? Because we still have other planets to visit. The next planet on our voyage would be Venus which holds the trophy as the hottest planet in our solar system. Venus might be Earth's twin, but it is in no way as hospitable as our home planet. The two planets are of course similar in size, composition, gravity, mass, and density, but that's just as close as they get. Plus, they might also have almost the same exact quantity of nitrogen, However, forget about holding your breath on this planet because you'll be long gone before 30 seconds. Before landing on the surface of the planet, you'd be pretty much well done. We're talking about temperatures as high as 820 degrees Fahrenheit or 437 degrees Celsius to about 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 482 degrees Celsius. Forget about the availability of water on this planet because it boils away any drop of moisture on its surface. Yes, it might have had water in the past, but since it became susceptible to a runaway greenhouse effect, well, goodbye moisture. But if you are in great luck and you go through the strangely cold region, which is about 78 miles above the Venusian surface, you might have a couple of seconds before being exposed to the dense carbon dioxide atmosphere on the planet and temperatures as low as minus 175 degrees Celsius or minus 238 degrees Fahrenheit. How about we go back to Earth for a short break for a gulp of oxygen-rich air and a refreshing glass of water because our next stop doesn't have any left for you to tap from. You can get it by while you're at it. You ready? Our next stop is the red planet, aka Mars. You'd expect scorching high temperatures on the Martian surface due to its reddish look, but this is actually the opposite with the temperatures being as low as minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 60 degrees Celsius. Perhaps if we had this trip some four billion years ago, we would have found water on the planet. Now all that's left of a possible northern ocean and other bodies of water are all but a memory and ice caps. It's a good thing we stopped on Earth for a drink. Then combine the low temperatures of the planet with unbreathable air, you probably wouldn't last very long on the planet. You would be able to move around, though slowly due to the low gravity of the planet, but not for long because you can only survive as long as you can hold your breath, which is about one to two minutes. After all, we've seen people hold their breath for as long as over five minutes. Anything above your limit, you would be breathing in the toxic atmosphere of Mars, which is mostly composed of carbon dioxide, trace amounts of oxygen, 
water, methane, nitrogen, and argon. Not the ideal atmosphere, right? Next, we're on our way to the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Well, this has been one heck of a trip, and finally we're making a stop at the first gas planet we'll be encountering on this trip. The only thing is, even if we wanted to land on this planet, it is impossible to do so because it's basically made up of gas and you'll just continue falling through the planet. When you start falling through the planet, it'll get to a point where your body wouldn't be able to handle the extreme temperatures and pressure of the planet and you'll get crushed like a can of soda. That is, if you don't succumb to the lack of oxygen first, you still wouldn't last a minute here. Since Jupiter is no fun, how about stopping by the most beautiful planet in our solar system? Saturn is truly a sight to behold, and it's definitely worth the stress. However, beauty can be toxic sometimes. Saturn is a sassy queen and she sizzles. The magnetic field of the planet creates massive electrical currents that would mess up navigation, and once that is gone, you'll hit the troposphere. But at this point, be ready to get hit by mighty winds as strong as 400 meters per second, which is the speed of a full-blown Category 5 hurricane. There's no surviving that. And even if a miracle did occur, you'd be crushed by the intense pressure of the planet. Would be worth the magnificent view, though. Ultimately, you'll last seconds on this beauty. Saturn might not like the visitors, but one of her moons might be a little bit more receptive. Yes, we're talking about the second largest moon in our solar system, Titan. The moon actually has hospitable conditions, containing liquid lakes and rivers, as well as an atmosphere rich in nitrogen, like our Earth, and sprinkled with small amounts of methane. It even rains on this moon. Check that out, a moon more habitable than our own moon back home. Drawback? No oxygen is present. Good luck running around the moon with no air to breathe in. We're heading toward the ice giants now. You might want to bulk up if you have extra clothing. Now approaching the next planet, Uranus, the first of the ice giants of our solar system. You shouldn't be surprised that the planet has an unbreathable atmosphere of hydrogen, helium, and methane, which gives it its blue-green color. This means you would only survive for as long as you can hold your breath. That is, if the mysterious X-ray flares and extreme temperatures and pressure don't get to you first. The temperatures get as low as minus 224 degrees Celsius or minus 371 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, you wouldn't even be bothered about holding your breath because you'd be knocked unconscious until you're solid ice. From there, we move on to the eighth planet away from the sun, Neptune, AKA the blue planet. Neptune has methane to thank for its very blue color. The gas absorbs red light and causes the reflection of blue light instead. No luck here in trying to breathe oxygen because there's none here for you. There's nothing much to see on the dark and freezing cold planet with temperatures as low as minus 218 degrees Celsius or minus 361 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure of the planet shouldn't be trifled with either. If the pressure doesn't get to you in under a minute, the strong supersonic winds that go as far as 2,000 kilometers per hour will catch up with you. And now on to the last stop on our trip, our solar system's ninth planet, Pluto. Just kidding, we're pretty much wrapping up the trip here. Odds are you wouldn't survive the extreme temperatures and lack of oxygen on the distant dwarf planet either way. Tighten your seatbelts as we head back to Earth and remember to subscribe and leave a comment down below.